to clarify, you have not talked to Brian. No, no, we, we, and we were told not to. But last time I checked, their child was home. My child is nowhere to be found. And nor are we getting, are we even able to ask questions on how that came to be. If you are familiar with the Brian Laundry and the Gabby Petito case, there was a civil lawsuit filed with the Petito and Schmidt family a few weeks ago, claiming that the Laundry family actually knew that Brian told them that Gabby was killed and that they are seeking a civil lawsuit uh, for damages also for pain and suffering of over $100,000. Well, here comes a new scoop on it. So I'll read it. So the title says, Panic escaped Brian Laundrie, fled his home in the wake of Gabby Petito's murder after fearing his mom was going to be arrested. So Brian Laundrie was torn between fleeing the U.S. covering up Gabby Petito's death, turning himself in, or suicide before he disappeared in the swamp, a source to the family said. He was found dead on October 20th, about a month after he left his parents' house with a single gunshot wound to his head. His death was ruled a suicide. Guilt, the media frenzy protesters, and the threat of his mother getting arrested pushed him over the edge, a family source told The Sun in an exclusive interview. The source says, I'm sure he was contemplating everything, who wished to remain anonymous. I'm sure he told his parents would turn himself in and fight the case, the source said, but the whole day was awful. The source close to the Laundry family was referring to September 13th, when Brian told his parents that he was going for a hike in the Carlton Reserve behind his parents' Northport home in Florida. That was the last time he was seen alive. The police were talking to Stephen Bertoloni, the laundry's lawyer, and all the media frenzy stuff started. Brian found out that they might arrest his mom. That's when he left the house, the source said. His dad tried to stop him since he was leaving upset, but Brian said he needed to get fresh air and clear his head, which wasn't unusual for him. After a futile multi-agent search that spanned weeks, Brian's dad found his son remains in the gator-infested swamp next to a notebook with a suicide note. In the note, he claimed responsibility for killing Gabby, the FBI said, and his parents are falling apart. It kills me because it's not their fault. They did it because this and they don't deserve this. I get such an awful knot in my stomach knowing they suffered so much. The bottom line is the Petitios filed a lawsuit knowing that if his mom did do anything, that she could be blaming herself and is living with the consequences. Bertoloni said they are in accuracies with the report and said the source claiming to be close to the laundry family is not I don't know what the, her motives are the Petito family sues the laundries the Petito family alleged in recent filed civil lawsuit that Brian's parents knew he killed Abby and planned to help him flee the country while Joseph Petitio and Nicole Schmidt were desperately searching for information concerning their daughter. Christopher Laundry and Roberta Laundry were keeping the whereabouts of Brian a secret, and it is believed were making arrangements for him to leave the country, 
the lawsuit said. Bertoloni slammed the lawsuit as baseless and said that they had no obligation to speak to law enforcement or any third party, including the Petito family, during the investigation. The case is scheduled for a preliminary hearing on June 30th in Sarasota County, Florida, where the legal action is filed. I think Gabby's family is using frivolous lawsuit to torment Brian's parents while, while avoiding the public scrutiny of doing it, the source said. I know for a fact that they thought it would come out in the public record request that Roberta did this. When the record request was denied and the media wouldn't publish an allegation like that without a proof they filed. I also know for a fact that her family wanted to use the court of public opinion, knowing it would be dismissed before Brian's family can ever tell their side. Filing a lawsuit is the only other way to get it out publicly. They knew that if Roberta did anything like this, she would be living with the guilt of wondering if Brian killed himself because they thought they were going to arrest her. I believe that they wanted to put the information out and that she did this without public ever knowing that Roberta is already suffering. And how it got to this point was that Gabby Petito Brian Laundrie's saga gripped the nation last summer as the cross-country trip quickly spiraled and ended with the deaths of two people in their early 20s. The case attracted internet sleuths, Miss Harmony, Dog the Bounty Hunter, armchair detectives, and conspiracy theorists. The trip during a physical altercation in Moab, Utah. Police captured the interviews with Gabby and Brian on the body cameras. About a month before Gabby's body was found in the Wyoming State National Park, an independent investigation was launched into the stop carry out by Moab police after formal complaints were made August 12th interaction with the young couple. The report, which was released in January, concluded that this was cause to arrest Gabby over her dispute with Brian and that it was a violation of state code that was not cited. It also highlighted inconsistency flaws with both actions of the officer on the scene that followed up the case and filed her reports later. It was also found that the officers failed to issue the right domestic violence guidelines to the couple despite them claiming to have noticed red flags that Brian was a weird and not healthy dude. Instead, the police separated them for the night and let them go. And on September 19, 2021, Gabby's body was found and the medical examiner ruled her cause of death was manual strangulation. Throughout the ordeal, the Laundry family has remained silent. Despite national media attention and camera crews parked outside their homes for weeks, Petito's family has done a few interviews and used their unwanted attention to shine light on hundreds of missing person cases throughout the country and domestic violence. So what's next? There are still dozens of unanswered questions that might come out as the civil lawsuit case makes its way through the legal system. Criminal defense attorney Josh Ritter told The Sun in a previous exclusive interview that could come out about his final days. That would be cool. Civil cases aren't as tight-lipped as criminal investigations. So I imagine as this litigation heats up, we'll learn many more details surrounding the murder, Ritter said. Predicting the outcome at 
This early stage would be as easy as reading tea leaves. Though I will say this, if the laundries believe that they may expose themselves to even Chris, the suspicion is there anything you could of say about the recent news? with their son to destroy evidence or harboring a fugitive, you can expect that discussion Has it changed settlement your opinion about anything will happen that, um, quickly. Gabby was strangled? Legation is never cheap. Much of the cost depends on how the lawsuit drags on. Also, Brian it is? might be that the Petito's lawyers took this on contingency basis with the expectation of a large payoff or for the Does media Brian exposure that can of, result of from such high profile Have you noticed cases. anything with the relationship with Gabby since she lived in your home? Are you going to try to help the police find Brian? Were you surprised when you heard the news? I think it's very interesting how this came out as an anonymous source. So I have my feelings about who this is. So I, what I am thinking here is when they are saying that they are accusing the family of harboring Brian Laundry, accusing Roberta Laundry of harboring a fugitive and avoiding her son's arrest, keeping him in her home to be kept protected. Wow. And according to the lawsuit with the Petitio's statement saying that Brian Laundrie told his parents that he killed Gabby. And that's what the Petito family's lawsuit is all about that Brian's parents were helping him, and if so, it would be against the law. And of course, if she did help Brian get away with murder, then there's no justice for Gabby. Although everybody would have loved to have seen it go further, have the deposition read and all the information. That's not going to happen because he is deceased. If the Laundries did actually conspire with their son, destroying evidence or harboring a fugitive and i'm pretty sure if that's the case a discussion of a settlement would happen very quickly to avoid going to trial and having the laundries have to submit every single piece of phone data computers and hand them over because they would have to and there is a stature in florida about these types of offenses that are committed. The statute of assisting a self-murder. If they were found helping Brian, they could be found guilty of manslaughter. Now, if you can recall, Brian ended up flying back to Florida to empty his storage. And we did find out that the father or did help him. So there is some sort of aiding and abetting in that incident. And Stephen Bertoloni comes out and lets us know that the parents said that Brian was grieving. The word grieving. Chris and Roberta knew that their, their son Brian was, was grieving. They knew he was so upset. And, you know, they just 
couldn't control that he was leaving and he left, he walked out the door and Chris has said to me, I wish I could have stopped him, but I couldn't. He was 22 years old, he's walking out the door. Um, so yeah, they, they suspected that uh, he may have hurt himself. And Gabby Petito was dead at that point. And so I've always said, and I'm pretty sure you have thought of this, that they must have known. And they just didn't say anything, and they allowed him to walk out the door. And maybe even Cassie knew, too, because there was an issue where, at one point in time, Cassie detached herself from all of this. She just didn't want to get involved. And then we have the van returning without Gabby, and thoroughly cleaned up, spotless. And so you don't think that the parents would have wondered why? Of course, because they probably knew why and maybe informed them, you've got to get rid of any traces of DNA on it. When they took Gabby's vehicle away, we don't know 100 what DNA was found, but we do know that the family was aware that he returned home in that van without Gabby, was grieving, was distraught, and cleaned the van, goes camping with them, and they are not going to talk about it? That's ridiculous. There's bruises all over him. It is just all adding up to, like I said, the Petitos gaining something in this civil suit. And this anonymous person is spilling some tea about it. So there's witnesses. There is a witness, and I said this before. There has to be a witness. And I have a feeling that if this goes through, I don't know if they'll keep that witness anonymous, but maybe we'll find out. So this lawsuit, I think it's looking very good for them. When I roll back and I look at the little bits and pieces from the gate on this, is how I think that they are going to present evidence as well. Everything's been out there in the public. So there's no secrets about it, and the laundries know this. So they would really have to have a very good defense or an argument in this. Mm -hmm.